Now it's time once again to welcome back Sir John Gilbert. This is a speech from Alan Bennett's 40 Years On. Like a hundred or so young men of my acquaintance, I'd spent the evening of August the 3rd, 1914, dutifully dancing to Mr. Cassani's band at Dorchester House. Dutifully, because it was the end of the season and the weather sultry. I was bored and longed to be in Scotland. We are cutting said Edward Horner as we came up from the supper room. He had had a fancy to hear the nightingales down at Kimber. And soon he, Julian and Billy Grenfell, Patrick Shaw Stewart and myself were in the Grenfell motor shooting down Park Lane. It occurred to me as we passed the Achilles statue that one of the partners on my card whom I'd cut was Princess Lichnowsky, the wife of the German ambassador but I would call the next day and apologize. And so, through that short summer night, we motored down the white roads into Kent. We've forgotten since how strong and fresh and pure was in those days the first sensation of speed. But ours was the generation to discover it. Our parents did not know it. Our children, such of us who survived to have them, took it for granted. In that open car, running down to Kimber, 30 miles an hour, it was as if we'd been sensible of the very force of life itself. We walked up through Kimber Park to find the house locked and shuttered for the summer. But the latch of the nursery window was broken, as it had always been for as long as I could remember, and we broke into the silent house. Here still were all the pictures I remembered from the countless Kimber holidays of my childhood the arming of the king, the piper of dreams, a little child shall lead them, for he had spoken lightly of a woman's name. And then through the house, Patrick, breaking back the tall shutters as we went, furniture sheeted, drug it down, chandeliers done up in bags, and moonlight like frost about the room. On an impulse, I pulled back the white porcelain handle of the bell by our fireplace, and heard far away across the court in the deserted kitchen a faint answering ring. We filed up the staircase to the galleries and the state rooms and through the bright chestnut varnish of the night nursery to the housekeeper's door where I had not been since I was a child and all the house was my province. Running away, it opened onto the maid's corridor, a narrow strip of carpet, running away over the wide uneven boards under the ribs of the house still close and heavy with the afternoon heat. We climbed out onto the leads among the turrets and towers and the green copper cupola. I remember the weather vanes shrill singing in the breeze, the lanyard slapping the mast as Julian Grenfell broke the square medieval flag above the dark house. I would like to think that up there on the leads at Kimber, where within months I should stand to hear the guns in France. I would like to think that on that summer night in 1914, the shiver I felt was one of foreboding. But if I shivered, I fear it was only because it was the hour before dawn and cold up there on the roof. And if I felt a shadow come across the moment, it was only because young, rich, and as I see now, happy, I could afford melancholy. For another day, another ball had ended, and life had not yet yielded up its secret. This time, I always thought, as I tied my tie, perhaps this time, but there would be other nights and time yet, I thought. And so we waited on that short midsummer night, and a deer barked, and our footsteps were dull on the leads. And then, as the light seeped back into the sky, suddenly, just before dawn, we heard the nightingales. Sir John Gilbert, with that very aptly chosen and evocative reading from Alan Bennett's 40 Years On.
the play in which he starred in the original West End production.